This is Evaluating Websites, presented by Allen Hancock College Library. At the end of this tutorial, you will understand the need for evaluating websites and know which questions to ask when evaluating a website. What does it mean to evaluate? When you evaluate something, you're judging it to determine its significance, worth, or quality. We evaluate things every day and then we base decisions on our evaluations. In the classroom, we evaluate information from books, articles, and websites to decide if it is accurate, if it applies to our topic, and if we can use it in our classwork. Information in the library has already been mostly evaluated for you. An author writes a book or an article, editors and scholars review it, publishers include it in their books, journals, or databases, librarians purchase the books and subscribe to the journals and databases, and the reader accesses them. You still need to evaluate the information's value to you, but you can be assured that library resources are accurate and reliable. Websites, however, are a different story. The web is still a wild west of information. Anyone with a computer can publish on the web, regardless of their knowledge or expertise. While information in a library goes through the lengthy evaluation process we saw on the last slide, on the web, an author can write an article and upload it to a website where anyone can access it. Just because information is published on a website does not mean it's reliable. Let's find out how to evaluate a website for reliability. When evaluating websites, we need to look at the five W's, who, why, what, when, and where. Let's look at these questions more closely. First, who. Who wrote the content on this website? The author can be a single person or an organization. Ask yourself, are they a reliable source of information? If you're looking for medical information on heart attacks, do you use information authored by the American Heart Association or authored by Joe Smith, who wrote a blog post about surviving a heart attack? Both websites might have valuable information, but if you're looking for medically sound information, the site authored by the American Heart Association will be better suited. You might also look at whether the website includes an about or contact page. Reliable authors are much more likely to include information about themselves and contact information. You can also find out more about the author by searching Google or another search engine. Other sites might have information about the author or organization. Amazon might feature some of their books, or you might find other information that tells you the site is actually an elaborate hoax. After you've determined who the author is and their reliability, consider why they created this website. What's the website's purpose? It could be commercial, informative, educational, entertaining, personal, institutional, or a hoax. One clue to determine the purpose of a website is to look at the last three letters in the web address, also known as the URL. These letters specify the domain. We're all familiar with commercial or .com websites. eBay and Amazon are both commercial sites. But there are also government, military, educational, and organizational sites. As more websites are published, more domain names are popping up. New ones include .net, .info, .biz, and .jobs. Another thing to look out for is country name abbreviations. If the URL ends in a two letters, it probably belongs to a different country. Here, you can see the URL for Google France ends in .fr. Knowing what the domain letters mean is important, but it will only provide you a starting clue as to the purpose of the website. Your next step is to determine the actual content of the site. To determine the content, you need to read through the website and ask yourself, what is the website about? The site malepregnancy.com is one example of a well-made and professional-looking website whose subject, pregnant men, is entirely fictitious. Ask yourself, is this content accurate? Is it biased? You may need to consult other sources to determine accuracy, but knowing the website's purpose can also give you clues to bias. If the website is trying to sell you something, most likely it's biased. Likewise, if it is an organization site, it will be biased in its own favor. While the presence of bias does not rule out a website's credibility, it's important to be aware of it. You also want to look at references carefully. Citing several varying outside sources is ideal. Citing themselves or other pages in the website, or no citations at all, are red flags. Lastly, is the content well written and professional looking, or are there typos, poor grammar, and links that go nowhere? If there are any of these, you can tell that the author does not put a lot of time and effort into this website, and the information is probably not high quality. The next question we need to ask is, when was this website last updated? 
The presence of broken links will tell you that the website is not very current. You can usually find the last update at the bottom of the home page. A frequently updated site is more likely to have reliable, current information, which is crucial to time-sensitive topics like world affairs and social trends. So you've determined that your author is trustworthy, the content is reliable, accurate, and current, but now you have to ask yourself where. Where does this information fit into my information needs? You may have determined that marines.mil is a fantastic resource, but if your subject is the U.S. Army, then the Marines website is not of much use to you. Likewise, if you do find a valuable website, it's important to be able to find more information about the author, website, and content. Besides looking to other websites for this information, you can also use books, articles, and other resources available at your library. If you're evaluating a website and you can't easily find the answer to one or more of these questions, the site is probably not your best source of information. There are a couple things you can try next. Try using different search terms to find a site. If you're researching the harmful effects of drug use, instead of searching drug use, which might bring up websites related to religious, recreational, or medical drug use, try searching drug abuse. Sometimes the internet is not the best place to find certain types of information. A book, an encyclopedia, or a journal article might be better suited to your topic. Searching the web for information about the cultural history of tattooing might only bring up tattoo shops in your neighborhood. A better, more reliable resource might be a reference book on the history of tattooing. If you get stuck, always remember that you can ask a librarian for help. So why is it important to evaluate websites? In your personal, professional, and academic lives, you make decisions based on information, much of it found on websites. Unreliable information leads to poor decisions. The more accurate and reliable the information, the better the decision. Knowing what questions to ask is vital to determining whether a website is reliable. Remember the five W's, who, why, what, when, and where. And remember, if you get stuck or can't figure out your next step, librarians are here to help. Email us, call us, or come visit us at the Library Reference Desk.